Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, do my final take on Linux Mint running Budgie. Um, so I've been running this actually consistently since I installed it, I don't know, about two or three weeks ago, I think. And uh, I just kind of wanted to move it off and be moving back to my basic native built-in distros on this for a little bit. And I think one of the things that I want to do is I want to invest in another external hard drive because I think that um, running the distros on the USB keys, I think the USB keys are starting to wear out. And uh, being that I should be able to find a um, uh, find another um, uh, you know one terabyte or even hopefully I could find one that's like like uh, half a terabyte or something, just something small. Um, uh, to run some distros on should have a little bit more long-term use out of it than the CD keys. And so uh, what I wanted to look at here is how is everything going on Linux Mint running the Budgie desktop. Of course you can check out the video as to how I went ahead and um, uh, built the Linux Mint Budgie because that's obviously not one of the desktop environments that is available to uh, to ship with Linux Mint. But you can go ahead and check a look, take a look at that video, which I'll go ahead and card up there, and uh, we'll talk about how the system's been running and uh, what are my final takes on it. Okay, so uh, here's my desktop. Of course, I have my um, uh, my desktop icons filled uh, filled in place there. Everything seems to be working. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people have said is caffeine doesn't seem to work on Linux Mint. It actually works just fine. It works perfectly. Um, there are, let me just go ahead and tell you that uh, to get this to work, at least here in Budgie, you have to add this to the auto start program in the Budgie menu, not the one in the Linux Mint um, menu. And so, uh, where, and, and that's kind of weird to me because some of the things I had to remove from the Linux mint menu to get, for example, the, um, uh, the, I think it was the plank that built in to budgie by default, which I don't really like. Um, I had to get rid of that in the Linux, um, uh, mint startup screen. So your difference is, is if you look at your startup application tool, this is the one that's run by Linux Mint. You'll see I have caffeine in here, but it actually doesn't work. I have caffeine and the caffeine indicator. Neither one of those worked. Adding both of these in didn't do anything uh, to the system uh, to start out. What I had to do is go into your Raven menu into my system settings here and then into my auto start. I had to add the caffeine indicator right here. Once you did that, worked beautifully. So some people have said that caffeine doesn't work on Linux Mint. It does. Um, it is now starting up. You know, the indicator starts up. I don't have it enabled by default, but there's times I want the screensaver to kick on. There's times I don't. And it works perfectly fine. Just coming down here to the bottom, right clicking it and activating it or deactivating it. So right now it's in the active state because I don't really want the desktop to go to sleep and I may not always be touching it every 15 minutes. Um, as far as how is it running on Budgie itself, uh, obviously I like Linux Mint, but how's it running on Budgie? Um, I like the Budgie desktop environment. Um, if somebody's like, you know, puts the gun to your head and says like, you have to use a modern desktop environment, it might very possibly be Budgie that I use because it has the degree of customizability that I like. I can set this up uh, pretty much the way I want a, a desktop set up without any problems at all. Um, and uh, it works it works great honestly uh, the only major challenge of course is m in the lower corner down here where I have my Raven menu and my show desktop the Raven menu kind of appears in a random location every time you turn on or turn off the computer it kind of resets itself to some random location so I am finding the Raven menu is the only thing that does that but it's it's kind of weird and that it just keeps on moving around everything else in the task manager stays the same but I can set this up the way I like there's just just enough customizability to it that it doesn't annoy me like GNOME. There's no customizability I can do without installing extensions. Um, of course, Deepin is has a lot of the same issues where I, I, you know, I just don't like the default out of the box look to it, and you can't do a whole lot more with it. You can do a little bit more with Budgie. That being said, uh, the things I'm not a big fan of on Budgie is. Um, I don't like the Nautilus file manager. Uh, that is, of course, the issue that I have with uh, with GNOME as a whole. 
is I, I really just don't like the way the thing works. My biggest gripes is copying files from directory to directory uh, where you don't get the extra pop-up window that you can see how the status is. And I find that the, uh, the, the item itself, let me see if I can do something here. Um, let's just copy maybe this to the desktop and see what happens. Uh, this may not be big enough to see what I'm doing. That just goes too quick. Um, what I'm copying from like my my uh, NAS folders, moving larger files back and forth, then the type of stuff that you see in that respect, uh, type of stuff that you see in that respect is um, uh, you get the little icon just just up here to the left of your search bar. You can pull that down. It gives you some information, but it doesn't give you nearly the type of information that I really want to see uh, on my system. And uh, uh, there's that, and there's I've had a lot more buggy issues with Nautilus, not just here, uh, but on on here, on other places where GNOME is uh, is installed. I do run into several other issues, so I don't really care for the Nautilus file manager nearly as much. Kitty wants to come and say hello. Hello, everyone. Switch to Linux. It rocks. Thank you. All right. Um, and so uh, with that, let's see what else there is over here. Uh, I'm finding that pretty much everything works the way I anticipate. Uh, Skype does have a couple little foul ups, um, and I found that those are on every Linux Mint. For whatever reason, I haven't tried it on my laptop, but on, on Linux Mint, on this computer at least, I have a KDE version, um, and here on Budgie, Skype, the current version, It'll work, you can do a call, but if you're on a call for more than like 20 minutes or so, then it'll all of a sudden go down and start being like, you know, poor connection. I'm sitting here on gigabit internet and it's like poor connection. Um, and that seems to be a problem that affects this computer, Linux Mint. It affects the actual internal hard drive, which is Linux Mint KDE, both 18.3. Um, and the kitty is testing for vital organ weaknesses, right kitty? Yeah, he's, uh, he's there wanting to kill me. <laughs> if you don't see a video for a while, this guy right here, he's the, he's the cause. All right. Um, however, the same version of Skype on Debian works perfectly fine. So <laughs> if, I need, if I know I need to be doing a lot of Skype communications, I usually just boot the system into Debian. It does work. It's, it's fine. Of course, this computer can bounce back and forth between this and Cinnamon Desktop. No problems. I do notice that um, this computer is getting every uh, every few minutes when I'm doing something, it'll kind of lag out a little bit. I think that is possibly due to the thumb drive going bad. Um, I'd kind of want to see that on another drive or something else to see if that's the issue. And I am finding a problem nowadays where uh, I might have to start the computer three or four times to actually get the window manager to load correct correctly. All that leads me to believe I'm guessing it's my USB drive is starting to die, uh, which would make sense. There's been a good three or four dozen distros running on this thing, and the computer runs off of that little USB key quite a bit, so... I wouldn't be surprised to see that happening. Of course, I have Thunderbird and Evolution set up for different types of emails, respectively. Those work perfectly fine. Um, I've done some some GIMP work on the computer. Of course, my uh, the end is nigh news video from a couple weeks back that was um, uh, that was created on this computer. And so, uh, as far as running GIMP, no problems there. I, I've had pretty much no issues. So here's here's my actual file of this. Uh, my very nice end is nigh thumbnail. <laughs> All right. Um, so with that, uh, the system runs pretty good. It runs pretty well. It's very stable. I like like one of the indicators for how well a distro is is how many times do I get frustrated with it and take a break for a day and boot into you know what's in the hard disk or uh, throw my Debian uh, USB key in there. How much how much do I actually do that kind of stuff? And the reality is, since I installed this system. Never. Um, I have not gone into either Debian or my Linux Mint KDE build since I put this up, and that's a testament to how good this system actually is. So Budgie, absolute thumbs up. It is slightly more boring um, in that it doesn't like it doesn't have all of the the flashy bells and whistles that I have on my KDE that's usually running on this desktop, um, but uh, it's running very well. Um, I actually have. Uh, 
Actually, I threw some uh, music in here to show you how that part works. So if I come over to my rhythm box here, um, and I threw some music in here, just threw some classical in here so that I can actually uh, play some music without worrying about copyrighty type stuff. Let's see. Um, I should have more artists than that. I don't know why it's only showing me those, but... Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we're going to run some Beethoven. I have some Tchaikovsky in here as well, but... So, you know, it's running now, and uh, I can go ahead and close that out. I still see that I have my rhythm box icon down here in the task manager where I can pause next, previous, or close. I can also manage all that kind of stuff very nicely in the uh, Raven menu as well. So this is one of the things that I really liked about, uh, about this modern desktop, particularly with the Raven menu and things. Um, I have the ability to manage... Um, let me turn that down a little bit. I have the ability to manage my audio and controls so I can pick my inputs and my outputs. However, I did run into some issues. In fact, it's even telling me my inputs selected on the webcam. So hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm pretty sure Simple Screen Recorder is set to use the Meteor mic. Yes, in fact, it is set right. <laughs> so I am finding that this doesn't work nearly as well as I was hoping it would. One of the attractions I had to this type of menu is the ability to, to quickly select which um, audio inputs are being used in, in different places. And so <laughs> that's one of those little things. But it seems to work out okay in the end. Of course, we have our notifications over here. Our calendar is nice and built in. One of the things I didn't like is if I click on calendar here, it wants to load up Evolution Calendar. It doesn't have a built-in calendar system that's a little bit more lightweight. It's kind of like opening up a JPEG image and having it open GIMP automatically. It's a little too, uh, too overkill. <laughs> but anyway, um, the system is not giving me any other issues um, other than I think that the USB drive is starting to die. Um, I did actually do a little bit of editing with LibreOffice over here as well. I've done some terminal management. I've done some email items, things like that. Of course, my weather application works out pretty nicely. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool. I like that. And really no issues. The, the problem I'm having, though, with Budgie is it, it kind of gets out of your way a little too much. The reason I like working with my KDE build is it's very flashy. It's got a lot of stuff. Maybe too much for the average user, which I understand. Um, but for me, I work in an office for you know 12 to 15 hours a day surrounded by a bake of computers and I kind of want a little bit of flashiness. I want to see the operating system every now and again. That's unusual, I grant. Um, uh, but Budgie does get out of your way. If you want a good operating system that's uh, fairly lightweight and um, just kind of allows just enough customizability but not overkill, I'll tell you, Budgie is a great system. So this has been my Linux Mint Budgie. I think I am probably going to make a copy of this and then I'm going to go ahead and change this up to something else. So you guys tell me in the comments below what distro, I'll give you guys about, I don't know, four or five days or so, what distro should I run on this computer next? A few ground rules. I do not have time to sit there and spend a day getting something built. So we're not going to custom build a Gen 2. Um, we're not going to do anything that takes a boatload of time. I got to have a distro that I can install and spend a couple hours configuring and then play with for a little while. Let me know what type of distros um, uh, fits, uh, you know, meet those criteria, and then uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, uh, watching uh, again, um, you can have a look at the other video uh, to see how I set this up. But uh, if you like Linux Mint and you like Budgie. Linux Mint Budgie, man. This is the way to go. It works out great. Um, I have enjoyed it. I've not had a need to boot into something else, but it's time to move back on to my other, uh, other operating systems, and then um, we'll, we'll also, um, I'll also uh, start looking at what the next distro is I'm going to run. So thanks for watching. Again, if you can, would like to help support the channel, check out switchedlinux.com forward slash support. Uh, you can learn about all the ways to currently help support us. As of this recording, I have Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. There are also some Amazon links down below. So if you shop on Amazon, that's a great way to help support the channel because it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just that Amazon will send a small portion of your sale over to, to help uh, uh, leave uh, our time doing videos. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.